So creepy anime dolls aren't everybody's cup of tea, but you might be interested in making this fake social media profile e-paper display. If you haven't seen these displays before, they're basically just like displays Amazon uses for Kindle ebook readers. The coolest feature is the data stays on the screen even when you remove the power. As such, they're brilliant for making little displays where the data doesn't need to be constantly updated. The code could easily be adapted to display other stuff. It's also designed to change the display at specific time intervals. To make this device you'll need an ESP32, a Waveshare ePaper display and the GIMP freeware graphics package. The source code is available for download on GitHub. See the description for a link. There's a lot of interesting coding techniques in this sketch, so use the timestamps to search for something you'd like to learn how to do. This includes basic C++ classes, the Arduino string class, creating randomized data including string construction, displaying of bitmaps on e-paper panels, and finally how to sleep and wake up the ESP32. So now I'll have a walkthrough of the code, and it's based on one of the GX EPD2 library examples. So the first thing to do is to make sure you've got the GX EPD2 library. I've based my code on the Hello World example, so that's just under GX EPD2 and this Hello World example here. So in this example, I'm using the 280 by 480 display. If you want to change the display, then you'll have to go into display section, new style and find your panel. So I've uncommented this one. This one's easy to find because Waveshare only make one 280 by 480 display. So you will need to uncomment one of these lines if you want to use a different display. So starting at the top, I've used some additional fonts and you can find all of these in C, Users, your Windows username, Documents, Arduino, Libraries and the Adafruit GFX library and finally in Fonts. You can potentially use other fonts because you can convert TrueType fonts to display on the Arduino displays but uh, I've just used these here. There's a few more available although the sizes are somewhat limited. Next I've included the images.h file. This one is here. This has the image data. So for the dolls there's image data for each of them. So check out this video on my channel to find out how to convert a bitmap into image data. I use the GIMP photo editing package because it very conveniently exports data in .xbm format. You can just directly import this into the Arduino IDE. Next we'll go to random numbers and there's a lot of random data used in this sketch. And not many people know this but the ESP32 actually has some built in routines for returning random numbers. So if you want to use this functionality of the ESP32 you need to include bootloader random and ESP random. So now I've defined some constants. This is for how to start the display position and also the width and height of the avatar images. I've also defined the line length. This is how many characters fit on each of the lines. There's also a couple of constants that define how long the ESP32 should sleep for between screen refreshes. So I've got nine different characters that can potentially appear on this screen and I've built a very basic C++ class for them. So it basically has two properties, a name and a social media handle. The class can have private and public properties, but just ensure if you want to access them from in the code, they will need to be marked as public. So this is a class and they are instantiated here. There is an array of the class objects, which is a really nice way of building up something like this. So to instantiate the array of characters, we just uh, instantiate the array, set this size. So there's nine different characters here and put the properties here so it goes name and social media handle for each one. Next let's look at the random messages that appear on the screen. So I've made a whole list of random messages here and the percent and character is also substituted later so that makes them extra random. So there's a whole array of random items here. We just use a substitution later on. So for example, percent %f is changed to a food. This is easy to change. You could potentially put anything in these. Next we come to the setup routine. So I briefly mentioned random numbers before. So it's worth checking out this link here because the ESP32's random function is quite complex. 
It depends whether you're using a project with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or you're not using any networking capabilities. So if you're using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, then the random numbers are generated from things it just finds in the airwaves. So that could be really random. But if you are not using networking, then you can use this function. So you call bootloader random enable. That enables another way of finding random numbers. So if you call random seed with this USP random, then this initializes randomness. This line here initializes the ESP32 to wake it up after it sleeps. So this doesn't actually sleep it, it just sets the timer. I've had real problems with this code actually sleeping the device and waking it up again. More on that later. So next we choose two random characters. So to get a random element of an array, you can use this construct. So it's basically the size of the array divided by the size of the object you have in the array. So we choose two random characters here. Note there's a bit of special code here, so we don't want the same character being chosen twice. So this will loop around until character two is not the same as character one. So this is standard code here for initializing the ePanel display. This incidentally sets the board rate of the serial monitor. So in the rest of the setup routine, we basically get two random messages, then call the function to update the display, then hibernate the display, and then the ESP32 is put into a sleep. So this is the update display method, and this is based on the Hello World example. So we set the font and the font color, which obviously can only be black, fill the screen with white, and this calls the function to render the character avatar on display. So I'll quickly look at this one. So there's a long line of if statements here just to select the data. So as I said before, the data comes from images.h. So you have to make sure that the variable name matches the variable name here. When the GIMP exports the C code, it doesn't put progmem in. So make sure you put this in. This specifies which part of memory the image data is stored in, and the graphics library usually requires this. So the gxepd2 library has a draw x bitmap function. So you put in the position of the character, the width and height and color, and the character data. You can potentially generate this data using LCD image converter, but I prefer to use the GIMP because it's nice and straightforward to export the data from it. If you want to improve the display of your bitmaps, then check out this video I made. So this code is kind of straightforward. It just displays the name and the hashtag on the screen. The hardest thing really was just to decide where to plot them on the display. You could always make a mock-up first in a graphics package. So next we'll come to this, and I don't think this is the most amazing function I've ever written, but it basically has to split the message so it will fit onto three lines. So I'm still quite new at doing Arduino coding, so I don't think this is my finest ever effort. However, it does seem to work fairly well. My major criticism of my own code is that I use the string class, and it's best to really avoid using the string class. The problem is that it results in a lot of memory fragmentation, and I think it stops the ESP32 actually sleeping. So if you know a better way of doing this, then definitely I would just replace this function with something better. If you're using char arrays, it'd probably be a lot more efficient. Another horrible thing is that it's kind of hard coded to make three lines, so it should automatically just word wrap to however many lines you want. That would be much better. So to get the random message itself, let's have a quick look at the get random message function. So it begins by choosing a random message from the messages array. Then it chooses various other random items, and then it just basically substitutes the percent characters and puts in different items. So you may be able to find this useful and use it in some other sketch. So as you can see, this sketch works quite well. The biggest problem I had was sleeping the device and then waking up again. I thought it would be really nice if I put it on my bookshelf and it like went to sleep and updated the message every hour or two. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't work. I just get a strange Guru meditation error and the ESP32 crashes. So I think the sheer amount of work done with this string class really messes up the ESP32's memory. It's best to avoid this string class if at all possible. One thing I believed was confusing the situation was putting some delays into the code. So you should probably avoid using delay if you're using the string class. However, after I fixed that, it seemed to work for a while and then it stopped working again. So I'm not sure if that was actually the problem. I did also try changing the partition scheme here. So you might not know about this menu option, but you can change the way the memory is laid out in the ESP32. I've also tried this erase all flash memory before sketch upload. This didn't seem to work either. So I'll try some enhanced debugging to see if I can get to the bottom of it. But I think really basically you have to stop using the string class if at all possible. As I said before, the code for this is in a GitHub repository and I've linked to it in the description. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching.